on another level. Amen. Y'all ready to get into the word this morning? Let's try it again. Y'all ready to get into the word this morning? That's right. I'm glad because y'all been giving me a hard time about whatever happened yesterday. Look, it's the first game of the season and it's Miami. All right. We lost a lot of people in the transfer portal. Our coach will probably get fired next week. We lose. Okay, I'm moving on. I'm moving on. I'm not whining. I'm being realistic, Sister Glow. I'm being realistic. Realistic. Amen. Well, it's so good to see each of you. I pray that y'all stay healthy. I know that there's a lot of stuff going around with the kids going back to school. So it's good to see you all here this morning. Well, we are picking up in our Spiritual Disciplines message series. Uh, this will actually be the final installment. Earlier this year, we started a Spiritual Disciplines message series, and we looked at, first of all, the inward disciplines, uh, those spiritual disciplines that we do uh, in terms of meditation and prayer, things that we can individually do to draw closer to God. And then mid middle of uh, the spring, we looked again at some of the outward disciplines, uh, things that we can do that have to uh, do with our relationships with other people. And now we're going to look at some of the disciplines that we do together. I want you to look at somebody and say, we're talking about things we do together. Okay, so we're going to be talking about what are called the corporate spiritual disciplines. And again, a spiritual discipline are they're, they're practices that we do to draw closer to God and to prepare ourselves for everything that God has for us. I don't know about you, but I am wanting more of God. I am wanting more of the Holy Ghost in my life. I'm wanting to walk in faith when it's easy. I'm wanting to walk in faith when it's hard. And the spiritual disciplines help us do that. So today we're going to be looking at uh, James 5.16. James 5.16. And this is going to get us started off in our final installment of the Level Up Spiritual Disciplines message series. So again, James chapter 5, verse 16. When you're there, say amen. If you need more time, say hold on, preacher. Amen. All right, I'm going to go ahead and read. Here's what the word of the Lord says. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. Let me read that one more time. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. For a few moments this morning, I'm going to be giving a message that I've entitled Confession. Confession. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this opportunity to gather around your word. I pray that as we are listening in for the next few minutes, that you prepare our hearts, minds, and souls. That, Lord, we want to just hear your word, but we would be transformed by your word. God, that we want to just leave here hearing a sermon, but, Lord, we would hear something that's life-changing, something that transforms us from the inside out. God, I pray that I would decrease so that you can increase. And, God, I pray that every word that would come out of my mouth would be honoring and acceptable to you. We pray these things in your name. Amen and amen. There are some things you are not meant to carry by yourself. Let me say that again. There are some things you are not meant to carry by yourself. There are some things that require you to do a team lift. Somebody say team lift. Okay, good, good. Strongest man in the house right there. Good. Stay on that slide there for a moment, second. So, so. so in a galaxy far, far away in a time many, many eons ago, when Lady V and I had just gotten married and we had no children, and we were living the childless life, it was great. We had this little apartment in Denver, Colorado on the third floor. And we had just moved there and we bought a desk from Ikea. And I, I go to Ikea, I load it up in my truck, I get to the apartment, 
And I begin to prepare myself to carry this desk, which is in pieces in a big box, up the stairs on my own. But here was the thing. There was a big sticker just like this on the box, and it said, Team Lift, Caution, Heavy. So what did I do, Sister Glow? I did what I always did when I was young. I tried to do whatever I wanted to. And I tried to carry this big box up three flights of stairs by myself. Now, before you all wonder what happened, Pastor, the good news is I got upstairs with the box 45 minutes later, covered in sweat, sore down to my bone. You see, I tried to do something by myself that was really meant for a team lift. Somebody say team lift again. You know, there are just some things in life you're not meant to do on your own. And I'm here to assert to you this morning, sometimes we can try to carry our personal challenges and struggles on our own. Sometimes we can try to go through hard things on our own. And we tell people, I, I've got it. I don't need you. Or sometimes there are things that we have been challenged with for years and we keep trying to do the same thing and handle it on our own. And we know that deep down, we can't really carry this on our own, but we try to do so anyway. Well, here's the good news this morning. God doesn't want us to carry our challenges on our own. He wants us to carry our challenges together. Come on, lean over to somebody and say, together. Look at somebody else and say, together. You see, there are certain things that God wants us to do a spiritual team lift with this morning. So in today's passage, James is describing what you and I might call a spiritual team lift. James tells his readers to confess their sins to each other. Don't keep your struggles to yourself, but share them with other believers. This is what he means by confess or confession. If you're going through something, don't just keep it to yourself. Tell somebody. Now, I don't know about you, but when I read this sitting here in 2024, I don't like to tell anybody my business. Anybody, any, can I get a witness in the house? I, I don't like putting what I'm going through on Facebook or Twitter. I, I don't want everyone in, in, in the world to know what I'm going through. I like to keep things to myself. So when I read this the other day, I began to ask myself, what exactly is James suggesting that we do? Why on earth would you tell somebody what you're going through? Why would you let somebody know your weaknesses? We live in a world where we try to keep everything nice and pretty, and we try to present like everything is good and, you know, pleasant on Facebook, and we try to paint this image of ourselves and make it seem like everything is good. But if you're all being honest with yourselves this morning, we all know that we have bumps in our road. We all know that we got blind spots. We all know that we got things that we struggle with. So why is it that James is encouraging his readers to confess their sins to each other? Is it so that everybody in the church can know about each other's business? No. James tells believers to confess their sins and to pray for each other so that they can support one another in their struggles. You know, church is often talked about like a family. And you know that families are there when it's good, when it's bad, and when it's ugly. Families are there when you are succeeding and when you're failing. Families are those who should have your back no matter what. The reason that James is saying confess your sins to each other is because when you become a believer, you acquire this whole other family called the church. And when you are going through some stuff, you don't have to go through it by yourself. You have people who are praying for you. You have people who will encourage you. You have people who are for you and not against you. You have people who will talk to God for you and not talk to others about you. You have people who are in your corner, whether you're succeeding or whether you're failing. The reason James says confess your sins is because you have people who want to do a spiritual team lift for, with you. They don't want to see you struggle with your burdens by yourself, but they want to help you along the way. You see, instead of struggling alone, James tells his readers to struggle together. 
You see, confession, telling people what you're going through, it allows us to do a spiritual team lift with each other's struggles. You know, when I come to you, Deacon Cameron, and I tell you, look, sometimes I don't want to speak kindly to my children. It helps me for you to tell me, you know what? I've been through that too. There are days when I don't want to speak kindly to my children either. But here's the thing. You're going to make it. It's going to be okay. You help me lift my struggle so that I'm not going at it alone. Or, or maybe you're going through a challenge at work and people are talking about you and you come to one of your believers and they pray that you would have strength to make it through, that you don't go to work and punch somebody. Can I get a witness? We all been there. We all been there. Don't act like I'm the only one who's been there. You ask that person who believes in the same Jesus that has saved you to pray for you and it strengthens you in your struggle. You see, while we should tell God about our struggles, something powerful happens when we as believers tell our fellow believers about our struggles and they help us carry our burdens. Is there anybody who knows the joy of not having to carry your burden on your own? Is there anybody who can testify that when other believers prayed for me and saw more in me than I saw myself, I made it through? Because here's the truth. You and I aren't meant to be in this world alone, but we're we're meant to have brothers and sisters in the Lord praying for us, interceding for us, having our back when nobody else was. That is what confession does for us. It allows other people to come alongside of us and help us in our struggle. So there's a single point that I want to take from this, this verse, and it's a simple one, but it's a powerful one when we're talking about the spiritual discipline of confession. Here it is. Confession means we don't have to face our struggles alone. When you go to your fellow believer, it doesn't have to be a pastor. It doesn't have to be anybody with a title, but it's just got to be someone who's been saved and sanctified and baptized by the same Jesus who saved you. As long as you go to them and you tell them what your struggles are, they can help you in your struggle and you don't have to take it on alone. We don't have to do what the world does and try to just will our way through what we're going through. We don't have to do what others do and try to fix it ourselves. But when we confess our struggles to one another, it allows our fellow believers to struggle with us. And we don't have to walk through the dark moments alone. We don't have to walk through the storm alone. Yes, your boat might be rocking, but here's the good news. You're not on that troubled sea alone. You have fellow believers who are there for you. So if you fall overboard, they're going to throw a life preserver out to you. And they're going to make sure that you don't drown. Maybe they can't help you by themselves, so they go gather some other people, and they come and rescue you because that is just what the people of God do. You see, confession means that we don't have to struggle alone. So there's three benefits of confession this morning that I briefly want to talk about. Here's the first one. Confession allows others to truly see us. One more time. Let me say that again. Confession allows others to truly see us. Why don't you just look up and say, I want to be seen? You know, the, one of the most significant needs that you and I all have as human beings is we need people to see us. We don't need people to see whatever facade we put up. We don't want people to see an image that we hope that they think. But we need somebody in this world who truly sees us for who we are. Confession allows people to truly see us. Confession means that we don't have anything to hide. And here's the good news. When you start telling your fellow believers your struggles and your challenges, it is a freeing experience. You begin to feel the weight lifted off your shoulders because you don't have to just carry it by yourself. You admit that you have your struggles and your fellow believer hears you and they begin to come alongside of you. You know, the first step of the 12-step Alcoholics Anonymous program requires you to admit that you have a problem. One of my friends who's a drug and alcohol counselor said, basically, if you cannot admit that you have a problem, you really can't get any more help by the other steps. You first have to admit that you have something that you cannot handle on your own. And he said, here's the wonderful thing. When you admit that you have a problem, it creates a space for you to receive help. 
He said, that's why we don't let anybody go to the next steps until they have admitted that they have a problem. Because once they've admitted that they have a problem, it opens up space for them to actually receive help. In a like manner, we have to understand that confession allows us to be honest about our struggles and it frees us from struggling alone. It lets people know, look, I have need of help. I can't handle this on my own. It allows us to be real. Is there anybody who enjoys real people in the house? Because here's the truth of the matter. Sometimes in the church, we really do a good job of not being real. Sometimes in the church, we do a really good job of being fake because we don't want anyone to know our struggles. Well, here's the good news this morning. You don't have to be fake in the family of God. You can be real this morning. That's why James 5, 16 says, confess your sins to each other. It allows you to be honest with your fellow believers. So number one, confession allows others to truly see us. Here's the second benefit. Confession invites others to support us. Confession allows others to actually support us. Confession, my friend, is an invitation for help when we need it. When we're telling our fellow believers what we're struggling with, we're not just bragging about our situation. We're not just happy about our storms, but we are telling people that we need help. When we confess our struggles to one another, it is an invitation for help. How many of y'all know that help can be a good thing sometimes? Help isn't bad. I know that we live in a society that says you should be able to do it all by yourself, but the truth of the matter is there's nothing wrong with accepting a little bit of help. You know, I grew up on the beach in Sarasota, and anytime there was somebody drowning at, at Lido Key Beach and they're shouting out to the lifeguards, one thing that I found is that they weren't just yelling so that people could look at them and do nothing. You see, a drowning person is crying out for help because they're making an urgent call for assistance. I'm drowning. Save me. Somebody help. They're crying out because they need assistance, and they're crying out because they have an expectation that somebody's going to hear their cry and somebody's going to come and help them. We have to understand in a light manner, confession in the life of the believer is our urgent call to other Christ followers that we need their help through prayer and support during our struggles. You see, when you confess to your fellow believer, you're not asking them to then go talk about you. You're asking for them to go pray for you. If I hear that you're struggling at work, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray that the Lord would bless you in ways that you didn't see coming. When you hear that I'm struggling with being a parent and the stress of work and the stress of life, you pray that I experience the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And here's the truth. The Bible says it. the prayer of the righteous person is powerful and effective. How many of you know that when we begin to pray for people in situations, we see a shift in the atmosphere? Is there anybody who's wanting to see a shift in their atmosphere this morning? You see, when we begin to pray for one another, things begin to change as we struggle. That's why Galatians 6.1 says, carry one another's burdens. You see, as the family of God, we don't have to struggle alone. The day you became a believer, you, you found yourself in a whole family of people who want to come alongside of you when you're meeting your challenges, who want to come alongside of you when you're in dark moments, and they want to help you carry your burden so that you don't have to do them alone. So number one, confession allows us to truly see uh, others to truly see us. Number two, confession invites others to actually support us. Here's the final benefit of confession. Here it is. Confession welcomes others to encourage us. Somebody say, I want to be encouraged. Confession welcomes others to encourage us. You know, confession is a moment where we can be encouraged by other believers. You know, maybe you have somebody that comes to you and they're sharing their struggle. It's proven that when you speak words of life into them and you encourage them, it changes something about their demeanor. It's actually physically healthy for them to hear that. You know, we as believers, when somebody comes to us and they're sharing their struggle and they might even say they can't make it, when you encourage them, that allows them to get up and put one foot in front of the other. You might have somebody that comes to you and they're like, look, I'm struggling with this sin. I've had this thing that I've been struggling with for years. 
But when you tell them, look, you might not be able to fix it on your own, but Christ working in you can fix it for you. That allows them to get up once again. They might come to you and they just say, look, you don't understand my past. You don't understand how bad I've been. You can tell them, look, if Jesus saved me, I know that he can save you. It encourages them to keep on going. So a few months ago, one, one of my buddies came and took me out for coffee. I guess he could tell that I was just stressed with life. And he, he asked me, what's it like being the father of four children? And, you know, 30 minutes later, he said, Anthony, it's obvious that you're stressed. And I said, I know. Look, my hair is disappearing, too. Don't blame it on the kids. Okay. <laughs> you know, my friend Cedric, he listened to me. And finally he said, and he also has four kids, he says, he, he told me that he knows the feeling. He knows that it's hard. He knows that it's stressful. But he said, Anthony, I'm here to tell you, it will get better. Those sleepless nights, it will get better. You and your, you and your wife feel that you have no time to do anything but parents, it will get better. And I remember leaving that meeting and I felt encouraged and I began to look at my situation a little bit differently. You see, in a light manner, we have to understand that confession opens up a space for other believers to speak into our brokenness. When we confess our sins and confess our struggles, it's just an opportunity for our believing brother or sister to speak life back into us. And how many of you know that when life is spoken into you, you begin to walk in that life. You begin to walk in that purpose. You begin to come alive in a different way. That's why 1 Thessalonians 5.11 says, encourage one another and build each other up. We are supposed to encourage one another in our struggles. As I prepare to close my message this morning, I, I'm reminded of a, a, a thing that I experienced as a young adult. I think all of us who have been in our 20s at some point, we've all experienced this. It's kind of a rite of passage. Anybody ever do a lot of apartment moving? Uh, and helping your friends in your 20s, Tara, you're, you're going to start experiencing this. You're going to move so many apartments. Friends are going to call you on Friday night. They're like, hey, I got to be out of my apartment by Saturday afternoon. Can you help me? It's almost like a rite of passage. Uh, Cody, I know you're going to get called because they're going to look at you and they're going to be like, you know, he's big, strong. He's going to love this workout free. Okay. You know, even though you might not like helping your friends uh, move out of apartments, I don't know about you, I don't enjoy carrying boxes up and down flights of stairs. I hate it when, you know, the couches and the big pieces of furniture come out and they, they look at me and they're like, you got this, come help us carry this refrigerator down some stairs. You might not like, you know, having to carry the TVs and all the labor that goes into helping your friends move, but one thing that is true is that you probably will help your friend because you care about them. You might not enjoy the thing that they're going through and that they're asking you to help them with, but you love them and so you're going to help them out. You don't let friends do apartment moves by themselves because you care about them. And we have to understand in a light manner, we as the children of God, we're not called to carry our struggles on our own. If we truly care about our brother and sister in the Lord, we will come alongside of them and we will help them carry their burdens and their struggles because we care for them. We confess our sins to our fellow Christians because we know that they need our prayers as they face their struggles. You know, when somebody's praying for you when you're going through a struggle, the power of God begins to work in your life in a whole different way. And you begin to be able to order your steps in God's way and you begin to be able to put one foot in front of the other and you find yourself making it when you think you can't make it. You see, when we confess our sins to one another, we know that the same Jesus who saved me can also save you. The same Spirit of God that is helping me make it through my day to day can help you make it through your day to day. You see, there is power in confession because it opens us up to the help and prayers and support of our brothers and sisters in the Lord. Confession is powerful not just because it's us putting our business out there, Confession is powerful because it is an opportunity for those who should love us to come beside us, encourage us, and pray for us. So how is it that we can put this spiritual discipline of confession into play? How can we practice confession as believers? There's three steps you can take. The first one is this. 
I want you to find another believer with whom you can share your struggles. Now, you don't have to tell everybody what you're going through. Um, we're not going to start a practice of, you know, each week at the church, we have uh, 10 minutes of confession where we come and confess our struggles, but find another believer that you trust. And I want you to begin the practice of sharing your struggles with them. Be vulnerable, be open. Second thing is this, I want you to regularly share your struggles with this other believer. Maybe you set a time once a month where y'all meet up for breakfast or y'all do something together where you can talk and you can be vulnerable and you can share. The third thing is this, and this is the most important thing. Confession is not a one way street. I want you to make sure that you're returning the favor and allow them to share their struggles with you. The beautiful thing about confession is that it's meant for believers to do mutually. As I'm confessing my struggles to you, you're confessing your struggles to me, which means we can support one another as we face our challenges. Friends, confession simply means that we don't have to face our struggles alone. Amen? Well, let's pray as we close this, this morning. God, thank you for this opportunity to gather around your word once again. Lord, I pray that as we go our separate ways that we would find ways of letting our fellow believers know where we're struggling. And that Lord, as we do that, we would find ourselves supported and encouraged and empowered in ways we never thought possible. Lord, I pray that we would know that we never have to weather our storms alone, but Lord, we are called to move through life together. The Lord, we're called to pray for one another. We're called to have one another's backs. And Lord, as we confess our sins, we trust that you, the God who saves, will strengthen us, will save us, will help us put one foot in front of the other. That Lord, you will strengthen us in those moments where we are weak. And that Lord, as we struggle against sin, that Lord, you will help us overcome it. God, I pray that you would keep us safe as we go our separate ways. I pray that you would keep us healthy. And Lord, I pray that you would bring us back here again safely. We pray all these things in your name. Let the people of God say amen. Amen. Why don't we give Jesus a hand clap of praise? Amen. Amen. All right. If you would stand for the benediction, we'll be dismissed. And again, I love y'all. Nobody texts me about the Gators. Yesterday is gone. It's done with. All right. If you would, please raise your hands and receive this benediction. May the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and give you peace. I pray that you'd experience Jesus Christ as your savior, sanctifier, spirit baptizer, healer, and soon coming king. And I pray that you would take the Lord with you wherever you go. Let the people of God say amen. Amen.